Hey there, my name is Pablo Farias, I'm the founder of Zemba, and this is the first video of this new series called Hungry Development Diaries. They're about my RPG game Hungry, which is built on HTML5. So if you've played the game and you liked it, or if you've uh, taken some of my online courses on game development, you might be curious about the process of making a real game, but not just the coding part, but making the levels and that sort of stuff, or distributing the game, how to get players. So in this series, I'm gonna be covering all of those things. Um, basically, I'm gonna be showing you how it is that I'm doing it with Hungry. So, um, the game is currently available only for Android, but when you're watching this, it might also be out for iOS and other platforms, because it's uh, eventually it's gonna be out in all platforms. I'm just polishing details on Android first until I reach a point where I'm comfortable with. Okay, so you can get the game for free. There's a free version. It's called Hungry RPG Lite on the Play Store. Or you can get the full version as well. The, dif the only difference so far is that the Lite version has only five levels, whereas the full version has ten more levels. But uh, 10 levels, but I'm currently working in six new levels to add to the premium version and probably more will come afterwards. All right, so the first thing I want to say is that this game is built on HTML5. Basically, it's built whether you're a coder or not. Um, I'm going to explain it in very simple terms. This is built in the same way that websites are being built. So using a language called HTML, um, CSS and JavaScript, um, I've made this game and using a, f a game framework called Lime.js, which we cover in detail in one of my courses. Um, so as you can see, I'm playing the game, I'm playing Hungry on the web browser. Now, how cool is that? You've played it on your phone, and you could also play it eventually on your web browser. Sooner or later, I'm gonna release it on the web, probably when, when nobody else buys it anymore. I might just um, put it out there, open source, uh, see if people want to modify it or do cool things with it. So that makes the, the development process much easier because every time I change something I can just um, do a full page refresh or I can use um, the, the developer tools that developers come with just to inspect individual aspects of the game, see what's wrong and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, in this video in particular I'm going to cover the um, level design process. So in my head, I have a, a full picture of what's going to happen eventually in the game. There's a full storyline. So let me first show you the sprite sheet file. So this file, it's an image file, contains all of the sprite sheets of the game, all of the enemies, terrains, items and things, and we're adding more things to it. Um, so this file I load uh, when I develop levels. and I create the levels on a program called called Tiled, which is a level a game level editor, a generic game level editor, which allows me to work with tiles, basically with these blocks. So um, the first thing I do, I have uh, I have a file called All Levels, where where I just create the levels, and then I copy the levels to individual files because then these files are the ones that will be imported into the game. So I keep them all in one file because that, then it's easier for me to keep track of what's going on, on the sizes of the levels, on 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 the kind of enemies that I'm using, so that I can eat like add some new kinds of enemies. And I work with two layers, so I have two layers for for map elements, and then I have a layer for the blocked elements. So which elements can be you can go through and which ones you can't. And I keep all the enemies and items and treasures in this in this um, layer here. So let's go to this individual level, which hasn't been released yet. So you're checking out stuff that nobody else has seen besides me. Um, so what I do afterwards is that I export the image file, but without the block and the enemies, just the just the ter the, the terrain, because then I load that that image and that's the level background. Then I export the uh, a, a JSON file, which is a text file with pairs of values by, by, by doing this, export as, and then in my code I will copy that into a, into a JavaScript file. So the thing that you export will be something like this. I delete everything but I only but the, the layer called blocked, which is the, the level that has the, the layer, sorry, that has the the blocked elements, the elements you cannot go through. Um, so let me just 
put this in more with more opacity so that you can see that those are the, the parts that you cannot cross. Um, so then what I need to do is put, uh, put the positions, set the positions of the enemy armies. So I have to do that manually. I could obviously export that from here, um, but I've, I've chosen to do it manually because then I add extra fields to it. So um, there's there's a, a, a list called enemy armies and then I put each one of those armies. I define which image is going to be shown, what, what's going to be the background of the battle, that's the position, and then the, the, the units that there will be there. So I defined uh, the ID of the unit, the power, and the maximum number. So the number of units you'll fight against is going to be random, but it's, it, it also has to do with the power, because I, I, I have I made like an equation to calculate the power. So according to the number of units and, and how powerful the unit is. Now I, I keep also a file with all of the units and all of their stats, um, the attack, the defense, if it can shoot or it can't, the gold you get when you kill it, the, the number of movements it has. Um, so after I do the after I do the the enemies, I add the items and the shops. So the shops. I also place them on the map, I give them a name, try to be original, and what units are for sale, how many of them, and for what price. And regarding the items, same thing, um, it, there's gold, it's going to be of this image, and some some items are gold, some items are def defense, spells, uh, the shields that you've seen in the game, and there's other effects um, as well, like Paralyze uh, spell and attack spell, and I'm gonna be adding more spells like afterlife spell, so you can revive units and so they become like zombies afterwards. Uh, there's gonna be golem spells and other sorts of spells as well. And I write down the level quest in here and the type of quest, which can be killing enemies or grabbing items or both. In this case, both killing enemies and grabbing items. Um, and that has to do with the east quest goal field on the different elements. So if they're if they're quests, then they'll be added towards finishing the level. So that's basically the process. Um, I also keep track of the of each level in an Excel spreadsheet. In a li so not Excel, but a, a LibreOffice spreadsheet. As you can see, I'm using Ubuntu. Um, so I keep the number of the level, and I I try to keep track on how much. And how much power the player will probably have at the end of the level, so that I can balance the difficulty of the game. I I look at real that re real time. I mean real life data as well on the real players, just to see if it's too easy or too hard, and then I adjust accordingly. But that's that's basically how I create the levels. So I make them on the map. I I put them in a, in a separate files. Um, all of the images come from a sprite sheet, and then I copy that to JavaScript. And modify and add further things to it. So it's a bit of a slow process. It could be, it could be probably streamlined a lot, but I just don't have enough time to make it uh, to make something more efficient. So whenever I get the time, I just go and create a couple of new levels. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully there'll be new episodes of this series.